The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons, and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know the rulers, that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. We celebrate our Wednesday in the second week of Lent. And in our reading today from Jeremiah, we hear, uh, and it's sad, the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, are speaking against God's prophet Jeremiah. And they are looking for an opportunity to destroy him, to get him arrested, uh, and the charge would be that he is speaking against their leader, speaking against the good of the people. And so these, these are false charges, and so we, we see that for poor Jeremiah, and they're, what they're trying to do should remind us of what we see done to Jesus. In the gospel where these false charges are brought up that he Jesus is cast as an enemy of of the people of God ultimately leading to a trial and his arrest and crucifixion I mean his uh, crucifixion and what I would say about this is that we have to be careful um, about trying to stay in the state of grace. You know, there, all of us are going to have times where that's not always going to go well. And thank God for that great sacrament of reconciliation. Uh, but when we are in a perpetual state of mortal sin, if we're always in the state of mortal sin, if we're in the state of mortal sin most of the time, what that can do is uh, dull our conscience or dull our, our insight into spiritual things. And we reach a point, uh, if we make no effort to escape that state, uh, where we, in a sense, anyone who speaks truth to us, anyone who is, uh, who is witnessing to the values of God, becomes sort of an enemy. And then that person becomes a threat like Jeremiah was to them. And sometimes you'll see, you may see how a person that speaks truth, like say, um, Leela Rose with the pro-life movement, how there are people that just attack her and the viciousness is off the charts. They attack her on Twitter and if they could do it legally, they would kill her. The only reason they don't is because there's no legal way to do it. 
And when we're in the state of habitual mortal sin, the good person, any prophet from God, becomes our enemy. And eventually any voice that speaks of truth becomes a threat. And uh, so it's thing to think about. I also want to point out that this is not most of our situation. Thanks be to God that doesn't, to, that doesn't always apply. But uh, maybe this helps you to understand people in your life that you have friction with, that you have an inexplicable friction with, that you cannot seem to, to work with, whether they're family members or whatever, and understand that they may be at a place in their life where anything that sounds like it's from God is a problem for them. So we pray for people. We do our best to be supportive, and we remember that God is calling us always ourselves to continual conversion and growth. Now we have our gospel today from Matthew. This is a gospel that I've heard many times since I've, I'm, I'm a cradle Catholic. <laughs> and uh, it's great. I love this gospel. Jesus, Jesus is walking with the twelve and he tells them, you know, his, his third passion prediction. And says, I am, we are going to Jerusalem and I will be handed over to the leadership. I will be condemned and crucified, so he predicts his actual death, and then I will be raised, so he predicts his resurrection. And the mother of uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, uh, they come to him and say, when you inherit, when you inherit your kingdom, let us be your, your, your leading your leading officers, which is what they're asking. Now, do you think they understand what he meant by resurrection? No, no. They didn't have a resurrection. <laughs> and they didn't have anyone of, uh, they could relate to with this experience of resurrection. No, they, they, they didn't understand it at all. They did not understand Jesus' words at all. And so Christ doesn't berate them, but he shares that to follow him means to carry our cross. It means to, in a sense, drink this chalice. And the chalice here is an Old Testament metaphor that usually meant God's wrath towards sinners. In this case, uh, something that is endured on behalf of sinners, which is the passion and death of Jesus, and that we are brought into, into that, into that relationship. And it just says at the end these words that are so telling of Christianity as a whole, that the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, but to serve. And I think that as the people of God, we have to keep going back to that. We have to keep going back to this profound orientation of assisting and helping other people. If you think about the, the work that the Holy Father, Pope Francis, does and our bishops and uh, everyone in the church, it is meant to build up other people. Is meant to help you. And what not a lot of people realize is that the priesthood exists for the sake, uh, in many ways, for the sake of the family. We are uh, helping you in your own context, trying to, to help you to have the qualities, the graces you need to pray with you, help you to reconcile to God. So the first shall be the one who wishes to be the first must be willing to be the last. And how often our pride prevents us from being able to truly serve other people. But we know that at the last judgment, did you visit me in prison? Did you, you know, did you do all these kind of virtues? It will be on our ability to have served others that we will be judged. That will be the criteria that will admit us to the kingdom of heaven. So I pray that as we continue this week, the Lord will help us to be able to serve other people and help build them up in Christ.